Hey guys, I am back again. I wanted to show you the speaker boxes that we're going to build for these um, BMR-12s. Um, really quickly, why we use the BMR-12s, you guys remember we are building a bipolar speaker design. There's two reasons why we chose the BMR-12s. One is because they're very compact in size and put out a lot of sound. Now they will reach anywhere from like 200 hertz up to about 15,000 hertz. They're pretty good all around speaker. Um, and the way it works is it's a BMR, so it's different than like a normal speaker. And because it's different than a normal speaker, typically BMR speakers will radiate much further out, meaning that typically you'll hear speakers are called a near field design. And what that means by a near field design is that speakers sound very good when you're close to them, but the further off axis you get them, so the further away from them from left to right, they sound worse, or you don't get as good a sound. Well, the BMRs are supposed to try to neutralize or get rid of that, and they can have up to 180 degree sound field. I don't know exactly what these ones are gonna get me. There are no real published specs with these since these are a factory biome, but that's the typical usage of a BMR. So since we're gonna be doing a bipolar design, we want as much room filling sound as we can get. And so that's what we're, why we're using these BMR speakers instead of just typical full range speakers like Funtex, which I had decided. Now I did make some boxes for these. These boxes will go inside the case. These are four inch by four inch squares. And these are 3.75 inches by one inch. And the reason why I did 3.75 is because I like to minimize my cuts and you can literally just Jenga these together so once you glue them together they're they're good because um, 3.75 this is quarter inch material so 3.75 plus the quarter inches you know four inches now obviously I'm not doing a great job um, doing that with my left hand while holding the camera but you get the whole the picture that'll be a one inch square now one thing to 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 keep in mind is that's one and a quarter inches once you include this and then once we include you know it's one and a half inches total you know because these are one inch but one thing you have to always look at is if you look at the driver itself you need to make sure it won't bottom out in the enclosure so you need to measure that now see i got plenty of room but you need to check that out first because if you don't man you're in a lot of trouble now i did look over these speakers these speakers have about if you measure, you, you want to measure these to see what size of a cutout. I'm going to be placing these on top of the box. Um, and so you're going to want to measure from the outer circle. See where these pins are. You need to make sure that those pins are inside. And that's about two and an eighth inches right there. Um, maybe even, you know, you, you could even go two and a quarter. The biggest thing you want to make sure is when you're doing this is to make sure that you don't go past two and a half because you see at two and a half inches now it's going to show on the outside so two and an eighth to two and a quarter I'm going to try to find something that's about two and an eighth cut it out and if I need to dremel any out I'll dremel some out and that'll go in just like that inside that box now some gluing the reason why I chose this size I should tell you this the internal volume is 0 0.007 cubic feet the reason why I chose 0.007 is I modeled it in WinISD and I found out that to be a good medium point. Now you could get uh, more usable volume and the 200 hertz range if you make it quite a bit bigger. But if you make it quite a bit bigger, you're going to be taking up so much internal space inside the case that you're not going to have a lot of space for the port, um, for the high vi woofer, for the low pi amplifier. So I chose 0.007. To me, that was the greatest balance between all of the sound um, so I'm gonna glue these together best way to glue these together you're not gonna use a nail gun for something like this because you're gonna go right through this you're just gonna put some glue on the side and you're gonna wipe it off with your finger and that's just to get it nice and even and when it's on there you're just gonna place it on gently now it's gonna kinda slide for a little bit wait till it dries a little and then where it gets just a little bit it won't it'll, it'll just take a few seconds 
and then place it exactly where you want it. And then do the next one and the next one and the next one until you have all four corners in the right spot. All right guys, so that is it. This is the enclosure that I'll be using for these inside that container. That's that DeWalt um, toolbox that you guys have been seeing. And as always, like it and I will get some more videos to you guys.